A man and a woman are compelled for legal reasons to live life as a couple for a limited period of time. At stake is a large amount of money. This is Ryan. And this is Ashley. And this is Ruining, Ruining Our, our childhood. childhood, a weekly podcast where we remove our childhood goggles and put on our adult bifocals to rewatch and review our favorite movies from the past. That is this podcast, and welcome to another edition of our rom-com-tastic Day. Valentine's Day Spectacular. You changed it. It was Celebration the first time. Oh. And last week you said Spectacular, which... If we can remember back to the first time, I'm like, you're not going to remember that. And guess what? He didn't. So no, I he win. Did not. I Ashley always, won. I always do. I do apologize. I changed it. Yeah. Not that it's I even remembered it. Yeah. Our celebration of rom com rom tastic Valentine's Day movies. If you're just joining us, hi, my name's Ashley. This is Ryan. And we're a married couple who owns a lot of movies. And we're, we're just watching them, man. Seeing how they hold up. Yeah. Sometimes. They're okay. And sometimes you're like, wow, how did I ever enjoy this movie? (laughs) This week, we're doing the 2008 classic, What Happens in Vegas. Or as I was just trying to type in, whatever happens in Vegas, and it wasn't coming up. And I'm like, this is a movie, right? (laughs) I Um, guess it was like, whatever it takes was maybe where you were kind of merging the two. Maybe. I don't Mm -hmm. know. What Happens in Vegas, starring Ashton Kutcher and... Cameron Diaz. I almost said Carmen Diaz. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Kumran, because it kind of like came out with a coup. Cameron Diaz. Uh, go ahead and hit us with some 2008 facts. This movie was released on May 9th of 2008. It had a budget of $35 million, and it made $219 million. So it was pretty damn successful. Yeah. Uh, popular TV shows from 2008... Were American Idol, Dancing with the Stars, and CSI Crime Scene Investigation. The number one song the week the movie came out was Little Wayne featuring Static Major, Lollipop. I don't know that I know that one. Uh, a couple other popular songs from 2008 were Whatever You Like by T.I. and Pink So What. And popular movies, uh, we'll go with Wally, Kung Fu Panda, and Twilight. I don't know that I would say 2008 was a great year for cinema, if... Twilight was involved. That's rude. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you love that movie. I just like it with the riff track. Yeah, I know. We've talked about it before. Delightful. Yeah, 2008 was... Uh, we definitely saw this movie in theaters together. Another one that we watched together. Yeah. We would have been dating like maybe a year and a half at that point. Yeah, we were already living together. Yes, we were. Yeah. Living in sin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I don't, I remember liking this movie, and honestly, I think the thing I liked about it the most were the two best friends Yeah, that I remember clearly, and I don't want to spoil it if no. anybody hasn't seen the movie or uh, hasn't seen it in a long time, but yeah, the two best friends are really good actors, mm-hmm. still work quite a bit, and very true. And we're the funniest part of the movie, I remember. Even to this day, I really enjoy movies that are set in Las Vegas. I don't know why. That's kind of like an appeal to me. Yeah. And this movie was obviously part of it. Yeah. It was set in Las Vegas, so that was kind of a draw. And honestly, I really went through a phase where I really enjoyed Ashton Kutcher. I I don't so much anymore. It's not that I don't like him, but I think when I was 20, I thought punk was amazing. Yeah. Somehow he made an entire nation of douchebags wear trucker hats. Yes. And I've always enjoyed Cameron Diaz, though. Yeah, I've always liked Cameron Diaz. Uh, I always thought she was hilarious. Mm -hmm. And I did like Ashton Kutcher, because I was a big That 70s Show fan when I was a kid. And I always thought his movies were funny. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, obviously as a show, and we've never really watched it, but he still does stuff. Yeah, The Ranch. Yeah, but yeah, he's not, like, getting lead movies like he used to. Mm -mm. But, you know, everybody goes in and out in their fame. Very true. And he's still, like you said, still gets work and he's still relevant. And I'm pretty sure we discussed this, that Cameron Diaz is one of those people that didn't realize hadn't worked in a couple years because 
Mm -hmm. I just figured she was doing stuff. I just wasn't watching. And then I realized, wow, she hasn't made a movie in like four years on purpose. Yeah. I mean, she could make a movie if she wanted to. Definitely. She definitely kind of did a little bit like Demi Moore and just kind of decided to go start a family and big ups to her. Yeah. And hopefully she comes back and starts making some movies again. They were going to reboot or do something with one of the movies she was in. Hmm. I can't remember what it was. I'll have to look it up. Well, we did get our Charlie's Angels reboot. Well, no, it wasn't Charlie's Angels. I know it was It was something else, but I can't remember what it was. Hmm. Do you think it's going to hold up? I'm going to say yes. I was kind of thinking along the same lines as you. I, I enjoy the main stars, but also the supporting cast. I remember enjoying them a lot. And like I said, I like movies set in Las Vegas. And I think Cameron Diaz is really good in romantic comedies where I feel like she always has real good chemistry with all of her male leads. Yeah. So I think that's going to help and help it hold up. And I think I'm going to enjoy it. I am afraid that I have to go with it's not going to hold up. I feel like it's 12 years old. I'm just waiting for some really dated notions of men and women that this movie's really gonna rely too much on. And, like, I remember most of the plot, but I I do remember even back then his two best friends maybe saying some offensive things. But I know they weren't the best people, and they weren't supposed to be, like, these great role models for him. They're just, like, his douchebag, douchebag best friends. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't know. I think it's gonna be a little cringy at times. But I'm hoping overall it will be okay, but I, I'm gonna say it's not gonna hold up for me. Okay. Um, where you can stream this randomly is the WWE Network. What? Yeah. It says on JustWatch.com that that's the only place you can stream it is the WWE Network. Okay. I'm not making it up. You look like you're like about to Google it. I do know they have a production company yeah. and they've uh, helped finance basically some fairly decent movies like mm-hmm. they i remember specifically they did the call with Halle berry where she's okay. an 911 dispatcher i don't know if i'd call that fairly decent I'm well sure. it was a movie that wasn't slapping you in the face with john cena or wwe That's wrestlers true. so okay i could see it being on there it's just uh, i don't know that i've ever seen um just a random movie yeah but i haven't been on their network in a while so that's cool that's true i wonder what else they have on there I don't know. We should check it out. Mm-hmm. You can also rent it or buy it on all the other apps. But yeah, if you do have the WWE Network, then it's on there apparently. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> okay, this, like maybe. <laughs> this website hasn't failed me yet. So yeah. Unlike Google did for our first 10 episodes or so. That Yeah, very true. We'll be like, it's on Netflix. And I'm like, no, it's not. Or it's it's like, it's nowhere. And then I'm on Netflix the next day after we rented it or something. And it's right there. there. <laughs> um, <laughs> like how you raised your fist like, why Ayata? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, guys, uh, we'll go ahead and hit that. Pausey pause. And go watch what happens in Vegas and come back and talk about it like we always do. Oh, I, I threw that in there. Shirk. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> Okay, and we're back. We just finished watching the movie, and now we're going to go ahead and break down our movie with our categories. I already said it today. Ah, like we always <laughs> do. And our first category is called Well, Hello There, where we talk about any cameos of famous or recognizable actors or actresses that we forgot were in the movie, and there was quite a few. There was. I don't remember the last time I watched this movie. It, it's been a while. Yeah, I was going to say, it's been a little while. The first one I noticed, and I remembered it right before he was on screen, was Jason Sudeikis mm-hmm. as Mason, Joy's fiance, who's Joy is Cameron Diaz's character. Yes. The first one I noticed was Lake Bell as Tipper. Yes. Uh, she basically plays Joy's best friend. Yeah. And, yeah, and they both, uh, Jason Sudeikis and Lake Bell, both been in a ton of things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't say that about Jason Sudeikis. I was just like, you should know who he is by now. Exactly. He's in stuff. He's been in things. Um, the other one I noticed was Kristen Ritter played Kelly, Jack's casual hookup. She's in like two scenes, but yeah. she's been on tons of things. Jessica Jones, main character. Veronica Mars. She was in Veronica Mars. Yeah. For a second, I could not think of the Marvel show she was on until oh. you said it. I was like, yes, yeah. Jessica Jones. She I was, was like, the star of that. Yeah. And yeah. then Don't Trust the Bee in Apartment something. 23? Sure. I don't know. 
We watched that show a little bit, but then it got canceled, so. Yeah. What was your next one? We mentioned Cameron Diaz as Joy. Uh, Ashton Kutcher plays Jack. He's yes. obviously the male lead, but his uh, best friend is Rob Cordry. Yes. And he plays Hater. The names of these side characters. Yeah. You get Mason, Tipper, Hater. Dave the Bear. Dave the Bear. We're going to talk about in a second. Zach Galifianakis, I'll just say it. <laughs> Yeah. Before, I realized, I don't know why I thought The Hangover came out in 2007. It came out in 2009. Mm-hmm. So, this was pre-Hangover, before he, I guess, exploded as a comedic actor. Yeah. That's a good point. I was just going to make a joke. I was like, do you think he just stayed in Vegas and filmed <laughs> The Hangover? But then I realized he's not even in the scenes that were filmed no, in Vegas. No, it's just Rob Corddry and Lake Bell. Yeah. But yeah, Rob Corddry was on, uh, he's on Ballers Mm -hmm. with Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and he was on The Daily Show. He's been in a ton of things. He's been in one of my favorite movies that I almost want to do for the podcast because I don't know if it would hold up, but it's literally... Ten years will be next month, I believe. Okay. Yeah. For the uh, legendary Great White Buffalo. Hot Tub Time Machine. Hot Tub Time Machine. Yes. Hot Tub Time Machine. I'm just going to say that. I feel like when we whisper... I know, I tried to lean in so they could maybe hear me say Great White Buffalo, but yeah. I'm like there's a possibility they're going, what did he just say? Did my volume give out in my car? Let me just no. turn it up so then when <laughs> Ashley yells next time... Like, I'm diff! The next person I noticed was Treat Williams, who plays mm-hmm. uh, Ashton Kutcher's dad. And I could not figure out where I knew him from. I thought he was on Everwood. But then I went to his IMBD, and it was not listed on one of his top four things. But he's been in a ton of things. He was nominated for a Golden Globe. But for... he is in Everwood. Yeah. Let's finish that. <laughs> he was in Everwood. Uh, he was nominated for some Golden Globes, and he looks like he was just on Chicago Fire. Yeah. So that was my main thing. Um, my next one was Dennis Miller. Ah, yes. Plays Judge Whopper. Mm-hmm. And... I feel like they could have got anybody to play that part, but then he did deliver his judgment the first time they went to court to get a divorce very sarcastically that only Dennis Miller could do. Well, maybe not only Dennis Miller, but... I had a look at his name three times when they were in the courtroom and it it's said Judge his name. Because I was thinking, I'm like, is it Judge Wapner from like, the People's yeah. Court? And then I was maybe like, Maybe that no. was the joke. His yeah. name is Judge Whopper. Very similar. I don't know. Yeah. But he was, yeah, you're right. He does do a good job on that. For a second, when you said Dennis Miller, I was like, no, it's Dennis Farina. <laughs> no, there's like, also Dennis They're Farina. both in it. Yeah. Dennis Farina plays Joy's boss, Richard Banger, <laughs> or as Ashton Kutcher points out, Dick Banger. Yeah. Good name. And yeah, Dennis Farina was on Law and Order. He was on Law and Order. And he was a new girl. He played Nick's dad. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, he's been in a bunch of stuff, but those are the two things I know him from. And he uh, passed away a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sad. The next one I had was, I totally forgot, Queen Latifah played Dr. Twitchell, which was their court-appointed marriage counselor that they have to go to. She's a little uh, underutilized, but... Yeah. yeah. I think this is one of those movies, I kind of felt like this with um, The Wedding Planner, Mm -hmm. where Kathy Najami's on it. And I felt like they totally un- underutilized her. She was yeah. in two scenes. But Queen Latifah was really good in her scenes. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Very true. Who's uh, your next one? The next one I had, and this was one that I don't know that you would catch it unless you were a community fan. Yeah. Uh, her name is Michelle Krusik. She plays Chong the stock trader, who's one of Joy's co-workers. But we remember her from community. She was going to marry Pierce Hawthorne, which was Chevy Chase's character. Yeah. Yeah. She owned a rival moist towelette company. Yeah, and from China. Yeah. Um, the next one was a nice little surprise. Mm-hmm. At the end of the movie, they're at Joy's work retreat, and the band leader is played by Billy Eichner, and he has one line, yes. and he's not yelling it, which I was. Ah. Oh. Whenever he's not yelling, I'm just like, just do what you do best. He's the best as Craig on Parks and Rec. Yeah. I guess. He he's say, amazing. Yeah. I need to go lay down for 45 minutes. No, an hour. A full hour. (laughs) Uh, 
<laughs> Love Billy Eichner. Yeah, he's funny. Did you have anybody else? No, that was it for me. Same. So we'll move on to kids would call it a throwback. We call it the prime of our teens, where we talk about fashion, offensive jokes, dated references, and there was there was some. Mm-hmm. C- some. Some. That's Kasum. correct. Uh, what did you think about the fashion? I noticed a lot of people, specifically at Jack's work, mm-hmm. were rocking some uh, denim shirts. Yeah. So that was a little... It's not really dated, but it's just... Mm-hmm. I always thought denim shirts look silly. It depends. Because I feel like in certain styles, they're or like kind of classic. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. The only thing I really noticed was a couple things about Cameron Diaz. The one dress she was wearing when they had a party when they were trying to basically get each other to cheat so that they could win the money, which I don't even know if that's how it would work. She's wearing this hot pink baby doll dress Mm -hmm. that is really, really short. At one point, you're like, is that a shirt or a dress? (laughs) And she's just super tan. Mm -hmm. And, And then her hair, the way it's cut. There was a point where we're like, we don't, nobody wants body. Slick, jagged, choppy. Don't don't even look like you barely have any hair, you know. Yeah, that I mean I had a haircut very similar to that around that time, so I can't fault her. That's true. I did think it was funny when she was using a curling iron. Yeah, and you're like, has she ever used one of those before? Because <laughs> she wasn't using it correct. It looks like she was like she almost was using straightening it like her almost hair. like a straightener. Which I mean, you can use a curling iron to do that, but mm-hmm. it was just I don't. She just did it once, and then she's like, okay, I'm done. We're done. Yeah. We're done here. The other, I did notice Jack always seemed to be wearing t-shirts with, like, an open button-down shirt yes. over it. Like, a lot. That It was all about the layers. Yeah. In a way. Definitely. Not to the point of fever pitch with Jimmy Fallon's. So. 17 layers. Yeah. Yes. It was a t-shirt and a plaid shirt. hmm Pretty much everything he wore. Yeah. And he also wore a, a lot of carpenter's pants. Yes. But he I mean... also, fun fact, is a carpenter. Yeah, so I guess that works. That Makes checks sense. out. Yeah, it checks out. Yeah. We'll allow it. I don't think anything else really bothered me. It's no. just, there's stuff that was dated. But... Yeah, it wasn't too bad. No. Are you ready to move on to the next category? No, because we're, we need to talk about dated references. Well, I mean, the next subcategory. <laughs> you start. Okay, our next subcategory is... Dated references and offensive jokes. Why are you introducing it? I don't know. <laughs> um, for dated references, uh, at the beginning of the movie, they go to Las Vegas, obviously, and just up on the Mirage's marquee, there was a big picture of Siegfried and Roy. Aw. Yeah. That's sadly that. a dated reference because unfortunately they don't have their show anymore. Yeah. The thing I noticed was about how the front of the Miracle Mile shops, because they actually did film on Vegas Strip, and mm-hmm. me and Ryan go quite a bit. Yeah. And yeah, the Miracle Mile shops has not changed. No. uh uh-uh. Which, you know, we were just there like a week and a half ago. Mm-hmm. I actually decided that Planet Hollywood is in need of some revamping, because they're still rocking that late 2000s It's the exact same. Look. Yeah. It did irritate me when you see the Miracle Mile shops... Because the cab pulls up and drops Cameron Diaz and Lake Bell off on Las right, Vegas yeah. Boulevard. And I was like, they don't allow you to do that. Yeah. No, you need to go to the back of the casino. They have a... Yeah, it's like they, down in the basement at that yeah, point. Yeah, there's this basically... In the, but there's places where cabs drop you off. Yeah. They don't just drop you off willy-nilly on the strip <laughs> like that. It does not work that way. Yeah. The, yeah. At, right at the front of the hotel. Unless yeah. they were... I mean, Cameron Diaz's character was a little bit of a A-type... Yeah, but tightly wound person. Maybe she was like, "No, you. This is the front of the hotel. You drop us off." And he's like, "No, ma'am. I work here. I drive here every day. That you have to go to the lobby." She she turned into a Karen and was yeah. like, "Let me speak to the manager." Yeah, of the cab. <laughs> they just they just cut that scene. Yeah, you know? yeah. There was some jokes that did not fly in 2020. No, but I think for the most part, they're pretty forgettable. I don't know. Yeah, I did catch up one point. Uh, you mentioned Dennis Miller's The Judge, and he was yelling at them that gay people are not ruining the sanity of marriage. You people are. Because 
they're in there arguing over sanctity of marriage. Sorry, not sanity. Uh, sanctity of marriage, which I was like, that's a well, little uncalled for. I think he was saying that, especially in 2008, we're still questioning. Yeah. That uh, the society was still fighting over whether gay marriage was even going to be legal. Definitely. So I guess he was trying to say, like, this is, you know, there's people that say gay marriage is ruining marriage. Mm-hmm. But he's like, that's not the case. It's people that don't value marriage in the first place. Like you guys. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I, I don't I, think he was being offensive. I get where he's coming from. I'm saying it was uh, dated and a little offensive and stuff that wouldn't really be in a movie now. Because, yeah. No, dated for sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's like a reference of the time. Mm-hmm. That didn't bother me. The stuff like haters like, this is my lesbian sister. Tell her about your softball game. I'm like, oh, yeah, lesbians love softball. Good job. Yeah. And Joy, she's called Jack the R word a lot. And then yep. she said short bus. Yes. I'm like, okay. Because he lost his job. Yeah. No, some of the those jokes do not age no, well no. at all. Yeah, she definitely said she was like, I'm going to save my purple bra for my non-retarded husband. Yeah. Okay, that's that's a good one. I'm like, call him a douche. Yeah. He's a douchebag. <laughs> he was. <laughs> that's... One of the more... It's a dated reference, not so much offensive, was Jack introduces Joy to his niece, and she's a little softball player, so he calls her Sammy Sosa. Yeah. Which... I think her name was Sammy, too. Yeah. And that that's obviously dated, because... Sammy doesn't play baseball anymore. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Your face, you're like, yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing that was quite offensive was, I mean, I know this has probably happened, but it's still creepy that Joy went along with it, was where Jack tries to trick her into thinking that their court-appointed therapy time had changed, mm-hmm. and because if she misses it, then she'd be in contempt of court. So they're both trying to get to the therapy session first Mm -hmm. and she gets in a cab and he had stolen her wallet earlier so she didn't have money and the cab driver is like oh show me your breasts and she shows him one because it makes it better if you only show one yeah (laughs) it's not as creepy and it's just gross yeah no no and then the worst part is is the cab then starts driving and they hit a traffic jam and she gets out and runs Anyways, yeah, so, so it was she all did pointless. it all for nothing. Yeah, poor Joey. Yeah, did you have anything else in this category? A uh, very last one was Jack and Joy kind of bond a little bit at their. I think it's his uncle's birthday party, over their love of Indiana Jones. Yeah, yeah, it's a good. That's it's a good, good reference. It's a good one. Yeah, I liked it. Um, the only other, I guess, thing I wanted to talk about in this category was the references to Cameron Diaz's weight. It yeah. happened a couple times. Like, one point, Ashton Kutcher is holding her, and he's like, oh, you're so heavy, and... Drops her. Yeah. Kind of makes her feel like shit. I get the dynamic. Like, they insulted both each other. They don't like each other. They don't want to be married. Mm-hmm. But it's just kind of dated for me. And, and then, then Mason did the same thing. He was like, like, oh, how's she doing? Has she put on weight? Because he dumped her. Yeah. Yeah. If she's gained weight, then she's not attractive, and I'll feel better about breaking up with her. Yeah. Yeah. Total douchebag. Kind of a douchebag move. Yeah. Do you want to move on? Yes. Our next category is technology. Insert funny joke. (laughs) You didn't feel like doing a joke today? Uh, I couldn't really come up with one because I will say I didn't have a ton of technology. I had a couple. Uh, What did you have? I didn't notice much technology before they came back from Vegas, but when they did and Joy is moving in with Jack... Mm -hmm. And Tipper is filming her on her flip phone to, yes. sh- to prove that they are trying to make the marriage work. Because the whole point of this movie is that they win money, they get married, they win money, and then they're trying to get a divorce. Mm-hmm. And the judge is like, yeah, nah, bro, you're going to nah. try this at least for six months. Yeah. And so Tipper's filming her, yeah, on this tiny ass flip phone. Mm-hmm. And I'm just thinking, man, that's so grainy and small, you know? And it'll probably take an hour to send that file to somewhere. I was going to say, would it even had enough memory to film that long of a video? That's true. On that little flip phone? Very true. Yeah, there was that was the main thing I did notice was Joy had a Samsung phone that was kind of a BlackBerry style mm-hmm. where it has like an entire keypad 
on the front of it, which I don't know that Blackberries are even around. I laugh because I think of all the movies that were pre iPhone, mm-hmm. and it's just weird to think that there was a time before iPhone. Yeah, it's like you almost forget because even movies that were made after the iPhone and the actors and they're really really small, you notice them, but they're still have the same like basic software. Yeah, and look to them. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, but yeah, it's just weird recording video on your flip phone. Yeah. Did you have anything else? Uh, the last thing was he when uh, Jack tries to sneak out to get to therapy uh-huh. before her. Uh, Joy's in the bathtub taking a bath, and she has her iPod on, and it, she had like the old white iPod headphones, uh-huh. the ones that were like just round earbuds. Oh, yeah. Which I mean, they still give you a pair, but they've just updated the style of the earbuds. Yeah, that's yeah. true. But yeah, she old. had the old school ones. Yeah, and the iPod. The only other one I had was Jack at home playing Wii Tennis very aggressively. Yes. I just remember when that was such a thing. Oh, man. Everybody was playing Wii Golf or Wii Tennis. Wii, or Wii bowling. bowling. Oh, man. That was our jam. It was. I do remember when we would get together on holidays. And my mom loved playing Wii Bowling. Yeah. That was her favorite thing to do. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's good times. Did you have any DVD special features you wanted to talk about? I did like the preview that they had. It was all about how you can get a digital copy of your movie. But this was back when you needed a digital copy disc. Yes. It didn't just give you the the code. It was just part of you had to buy the movie mm-hmm. to get the digital copy, too. Yeah. And now it's like, I can just go to random app download exactly go to voodoo or yeah, yeah. but i the commercial is very dated yeah because it was laptop was so big i thought it was funny that they show a guy in a park with his laptop mm-hmm. and he's so excited because he can watch his digital copy now because he has a laptop and i'm thinking well you had a laptop you probably could have just played the dvd on your laptop sir nope i want to download it to my small ass <laughs> ipod yes because they show it in the commercial <laughs> So Not I can watch computer. it on the two-inch screen, <laughs> which we totally did. Absolutely. But so. I used to do it all the time. I only had like three movies on my iPod, but I watched them. Yeah. Shout out to The Hangover. The only thing else they had on the DVDs was a fr- commercial for Fringe. Yeah. Which was, I realized how old that show is now. It's insane. Yeah. Also, I should note, when they started showing it and there was a plane and everything... I didn't know what it was, and we've watched Fringe, probably started it at least twice, Yeah, almost finished it, never finished it, by the way, but we've seen it, We're really and it didn't it. trigger until uh, I saw the main lady, yeah. uh, Anna Torv. Yeah, that was a good callback, though. Yeah. I didn't really have anything on the soundtrack other than that uh, opening song was Grace Kelly by Mika, and I totally forgot that song. Which, I knew it wasn't a Queen song. But it sounds... He does sound, yeah. Yeah, a lot like a Queen song. I did hear uh, Jet, Are You Gonna Be My Girl playing. Yeah. That's a good dated song. That is a good one. Yeah. But that's about it. Not a, not a lot of dated songs. Yeah. Do you want to move on? Yes. Okay, the next category is called Is It Even Good? Where we talk about the plot, mostly, mm-hmm. and plot holes. And we name our funniest and cringiest moment of the movie. What did you think about the plot? Did you think it was good believable no i don't think it's (laughs) believable at all no usually i go it's believable no it was not Uh, a couple people meeting in vegas getting married after four hours of knowing each other it's probably happened at some point in history but i don't think that's believable and then i don't know that a judge can actually sentence you to six months of marriage yeah i don't know about that one yeah I think maybe if there were some sort of circumstances, like this is the third time they've done it with various people, yeah. maybe, but I just, yeah. I could see them getting a little creative at that point. That's yeah. a good one. But yeah, also the reason they're sentenced to six months is he wants to know how to divide up their Vegas jackpot they won. Yes. This is all very realistic. <laughs> their $3 million win yes. on a 25 cent bet. Yes. And if I you wanna, could only hope. And here's one of my plot holes. Okay. They are at a slot machine. Yes. They are common throughout Las Vegas. 
as we've established, me and Ashley go to Las Vegas quite often. They play one quarter in that machine. Yes. Which actually Cameron Diaz has played a couple quarters. He hits the jackpot. It says right there on the front of the machine to win the progressive, you have to be playing two credits. He You're only, only playing one. He only put one. So you, and it says what you win for one is ten thousand uh a thousand quarters. Mm. They would have won two hundred and fifty dollars. This movie would have a very diff- different plot. I don't think they would be arguing over how to split 250 bucks. No. But I, I did see on the one instruction of the machine that if you won, you got the progressive. Like, it just said progressive. But it was... if you I were, can't say progressive. But you had to be playing the two credits. Oh, well, that's yeah. a plot hole, yes. Yeah. Furthermore, on her previous spin, she hit triple jackpot, triple jackpot, seven. Mm-hmm. That had to have been something. Yeah. And whatever they were just like, you know, playing the machine and they just kept winning and they're like, <laughs> we're not to that scene yet. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. The coin machine also was kind of a dated reference. Yeah. Because those aren't existing in Vegas, at least. Excellent point. Yeah. There's yeah. no machines where you can just drop a quarter in anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Only takes dollar bills. Dollar dollar bill. Dollar dollar bill, y'all. And they just take all your money. <laughs> no. Um, I mean, I agree with the plot. It's it's a dumb plot. I mean, it's highly unlikely mm-hmm. and everything, but it it is what it is. I think my first... I'm trying to find my first plot hole. I think I wrote them in the wrong section. I did. She put them down in cringiest or additional notes? I just... In the section above. Oh. I, d- I did want to talk about how cliche it is almost at this point that you would have way too much fun in Vegas and wake up married or... Mm-hmm. You know, the hangover style that came out the next year. Yeah. I guess the way they make it different is that it's not like a guy getting married to like a stripper. It's a woman getting married to a deadbeat party boy, I guess. Yeah, she's a very successful stockbroker, it seems like, and he's just been fired by his own father. Yes. You mentioned hangover. I noticed the morning after which they were so drunk they don't remember getting married, blah, 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 or Cameron Diaz at least does not remember getting married. They're at the buffet. Not one of them has a hangover. Yeah. Well, I always say Vegas is very magical in that way, for me at least. (laughs) I never get hangovers there. That's true. I've never had a hangover in Vegas. Yeah. It's weird. It's like magic. Yeah. We've been there with some family that have had some hangovers. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Oof. Oof. Uh, what was the other one I wanted to talk about? I was thinking that in that whole montage, we kind of talked about it, the race to the therapy session, Mm -hmm. and they're doing so many things along that race that I'm like, how has the police not been called? They stole things from people's picnics. They damaged basically like a farmer's market. Yeah. Damaged a bunch of booths. They did a lot on that run. Yeah, and I'm surprised somebody's like, there's just this crazy-ass couple fighting, physically fighting, and damaging things. They would have been arrested. That's a good point. Yeah. They committed at least six misdemeanors. Yeah. Realistically, they would have been at least stopped. Yeah. And people would be like, you guys need to calm down. Calm your shit. Did you have anything else? No, that was it for my plot holes but i would say i think this movie had the most for me <laughs> there there's there's questionable things yeah i could have probably named a couple more things but we can move on mm-hmm. to our funniest liner moment what was yours there was i would say like quite a few good chuckles in it but i did like when right when they get back from actually they're not even back from vegas uh jack is talking to hater i think it's right after he gets fired and he's asking if he can sue his dad yeah. And Hater's like, no, you can't see your dad. And he's like, are you sure? Because he would love it. He would think we were bonding. Yeah. <laughs> Which I just thought was pretty funny. I liked the part where they're at their first court hearing and the judge asks Joy if she has any evidence that they got married because they wanted to. Because mm-hmm. she was trying to contest that, yes, they're married and it's a legally binding marriage. So she deserves half the money. And he's trying to say, like, it was a... You know, we were drunk. We didn't know what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And she has a napkin that says, I think it says Joy plus Jack. Yeah, forever. Yeah, and she has it in a Ziploc bag, and she is showing it. And the way she just 
puts it in front of Jack's face and just taps it, and she's like, look. <laughs> it was just funny. And was then like, I did like how the judge's reaction was like, well, look at their evidence. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Uh, what was your cringiest? There was, we mentioned a lot of the jokes that didn't age well, and there's some other scenes during the movie that are kind of cringy. But for me, it was at the very end of the movie, Jack's going to go run down Joy to get her back, and they have another montage, because, right. God, we needed another one. And it consists of him driving, he goes to a marina, he gets on a boat, takes a boat across to a island where there's a lighthouse. Keep in mind, it's basically the only thing on the island. It is a massive lighthouse. So then he takes off running... And he gets up, and he's somehow, like, up on a deck. Uh-huh. And he's looking out in towards the water again. He's looking for the lighthouse. And he turns around like, oh, there it is, and starts running towards the lighthouse again. How did you lose it? <laughs> it's right in front of you. It is a massive, massive lighthouse. He, uh, and it yeah, was right was behind you, funny. sir. I had some issues with... Some of the lines that I assume were supposed to be kind of serious or m more emotional moments. Mm -hmm. And one that I thought was pretty cringy was at the beginning of the movie when they accidentally are in each other's room. Or I guess they got the same room. Mm -hmm. And they realize it, so they go downstairs and they, they talk themselves into getting penthouse suites and a bunch of VIP stuff. So they're yeah. on the strip in this stretch limo, all four of them. Mm -hmm. And Cameron, Diaz, and, like, Belle leave, because these two douches are being douches. It seems like they're being douches. <laughs> and he yells to her from the, whatever that's called. Sunroof? Sunroof. And he's like, I bet you look real good with your hair down. And it was just so cheesy. Yeah. And she was just like, my hair is down. <laughs> he, he meant, like, metaphorically, but yeah. still. Yeah. Cheesy. And she's a very smart stockbroker. Yeah. She gets that joke. She didn't get it, though. But I'm saying... Oh, like... She should get that joke. Like, why true. are they writing it for her where she doesn't get this joke? Because like, she's not fun. Yeah. Because yeah. he's the party boy fun guy, and she's the really serious, tight-wound robot. Career woman. Yeah. How dare she? Do you have any additional notes that you want to talk about? Um, I had a couple, but okay. let me see, because I we talked about some of them naturally. Naturally. I will say... I don't know. I mean, you're a man. I can ask you. Mm -hmm. But is there any, like, movie or TV stereotypes of men that bother you? Not really. <laughs> I, I feel like there's more female stereotypes where they try to typecast them and they always have to be the unfun and here's the super cool party guy. Like, but that's that annoying. Being Obviously, there's so many movies where it, the male, he doesn't have any ambition he's sloppy he mm -hmm. you know he doesn't care about anything but sports and you know i i just because in this case where i'm going with this is that after they have to move in together jack his apartment is disgusting mm -hmm. he's just gross and i i don't know i'm like i know plenty of guys that are very clean yeah. they ha like a clean house they're not it's not like they're living in a frat yeah. Which I'm like, I get it. Boys are dirty. I grew up with a brother. They can be dirty, leave shit lying around. Mm -hmm. But I think as you get older, you kind of respect your space more. I mean, I'm sure there's guys that don't. Agreed. But I think a majority of human beings in general. But it's always like an opposite thing because I feel like women are depicted as these like crazy OCD cleaning, which uh, there's plenty of girls I know that are very messy people too. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just silly stereotypes like that. Yeah. No, and I agree with you because also, if I had to guess, Jack is late 20s. Yes. And they act like he's in his late teens. Well, yes, yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, like, if he I was, agree with you on that. If he was in college, like, I guess I could see how his apartment would be in that state. Yeah. But I'm like, I don't care that he's a bachelor. Like, I feel like he should still take care of his own shit. I think the one that specifically really irritated me was... When she does move in and the bed comes down, like mm -hmm. it's a Murphy-style bed, it smells disgusting. You know, she's, like, for breezing the crap out of it. And he's just like, yeah, that's such a dumb one. Like, you, you sleep in your own filth, I You're guess? like, cool. As a guy, I like when my bed smells nice. Yeah. Like, yeah. Wash your sheets, man. But it, it's funny to me because I, I think this movie does rely on a lot of uh, men and women stereotypes still. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. But I felt like his annoyed me more because I think out of a lot of female characters, she wasn't so badly written, mm-hmm. but she still didn't have as much development as he did, I feel like, as far as his background story. I don't know anything about Joy's family. That's true. Or what she did before she was a stockbroker, other than she visited a beach once. And liked a lighthouse yeah. that he had to go find. Yes. <laughs> did you have anything else? Uh, I did not. Okay, well. Because a lot of them, when I put down my notes, they always end up kind of going into other categories, and I'll end up covering them. I'm like, I'm like, that's kind of a plot hole. You're right. I also, I'm looking, because I have quite a few, and I'm like, nope, we talked about that. <laughs> nope, we talked about that. <laughs> I was going to say, I have five, and we covered them all. Other than, I feel like when I first saw this movie, I thought Mason, Jason Sudeik's character, was a dick mm-hmm. for breaking up with his girlfriend, all this stuff. And now that I think about it, I'm like, well, he had kind of a valid reason for breaking up with her. He felt like her personality didn't mesh with his, and I think that's a, a important thing. Yeah. Like, no matter if she did a lot of stuff for him and took care of him, like, if you don't like the person you're with you shouldn't be with them yeah don't prolong things yeah and then him breaking up with her he didn't know she was gonna have a surprise party for him so he didn't know that what he was doing was really embarrassing for her because he was just breaking up with her in a dark hallway but i did like when he starts the breakup and he says how i appreciate everything that you've been doing for me you know sexually like with my butt (laughs) yeah and the door is open. Yeah. So all these people can hear it. Yeah. So that yeah. was actually a really funny scene. I Yeah, I agree. But it's, I was thinking, seeing this movie again, I'm like, well, I mean, he didn't know people were there. So yeah. it wasn't like he was just saying it in front of all these people to be a jerk. But Very true. Do you want to move on to our final thoughts? Yes. As you know, it is always award season here on Ruining Our Childhood. We give out two awards every week, the first of which is a valedictorian to the Nicolas Cage Online School of Bad Acting. Who did you give your award to? I gave mine to Ashton Kutcher because I don't like him as an actor, I decided. Mm -hmm. I think he's really overrated, and he doesn't have as much chemistry with people as, as some other actors would. I mean, he wasn't bad in this movie, and I think, because overall I did like the cast, I thought the cast was pretty solid. Mm -hmm. I just, all of his moments in the movie were kind of meh for me. And, um, as of when he was with Cameron Diaz, I will say. Yeah. Or Rob Corddry. So, Mm -hmm. if if he had somebody stronger in the scene, he was good. But, Mm -hmm. I just, his serious moments were the things that annoyed me in the lines that he had to say that were kind of cheesy. Yeah. I felt like he... He couldn't convince me that he actually had feelings or that he felt bad that his dad never was proud of him and all this stuff. And and just with the random yelling, to me, is uh, it's, it's, it's a trait of his. Yeah. I think he's definitely an actor who has kind of gotten to where he is in life on account of his looks. Yes. And he's, he's very good looking. He's funny. Yeah. He, he can be funny in some of the things that we've seen him in. But I do think that kind of has worn off on him and it's... To a point where I know he has a show on Netflix, but I don't know the last time I saw him in a movie. I I think he is kind of one dimensional. Yes. As an actor, and to me, he's a dated reference, and him yelling is a dated reference. I think of late nineties to mm-hmm. mid two thousands, and you kind of I was going to give it to somebody else, but I think you did. You kind of talked me into giving it to him. Who are you going to give it? I to? was going to give it to, and it's not because I didn't think he was funny or any of that. I was going to give it to Rob Corddry in the sense that he's a lawyer, but he's a total moron. Yeah. And I didn't like that part. I, he was really funny in the movie. And yeah. And haters, he plays off of Ashton Kutcher really well and specifically pays off of Lake Bell really well in their scenes together. But I'm just like, he's so dumb. And that kind of irritated me with he how was, dumb he is. He is a dumb and he's a dick. Yeah. And I don't get me wrong. I think people... You should have characters that are dicks, and mm-hmm. he's really good at playing them. Yes. He's been a dick in very many things. Mm-hmm. But and, but honestly, I think the only way you can get away with some of the jokes that they make is knowing that he's a horrible person. Yes. And being like, okay, he's a horrible person saying this. It's not the main character who is supposed to be this redeeming character saying something really horrible, which in this movie they do sometimes do. It was kind of weird because I think before we started watching it, I actually thought, I'm like, he'll probably get my MVP because I do love Rob Corddry a lot. But then when I watched it, I'm like, "Ah, he's kind of, 
like you said, he's a dick. He always calls Tipper stripper. stripper. But again, clever. He's probably pushing forty. Yeah. Like that's what you do at forty. Yeah. You call people names. Cool. The men in this are very immature. Yeah, they're nineteen-year-old boys. Yes. Oh, I did want to say one line that really sold it on National Kutcher for me was, "You bet on me, Joy, and you made me want to bet on myself." They really have to come Oof. back to this uh, jackpot thing. Oh. I'm pretty sure the last line was, "We won the jackpot." I think she, yes. In life, we won the jackpot, baby. Yeah. I, oh Jesus. Who is your Thomas J. Hanks Award for exceptional acting? I gave mine to Cameron Diaz as Joy. I felt like her character shows the most range. Like, she kind of gets her heart broken by Mason, and then also by Jack, too. Mm -hmm. But she was also pretty likable. As the movie went on, I was kind of rooting for her to get the money. But yeah, I thought she was really good. Who did you give your award to? I actually gave mine to Lake Bell. Oh. Because I honestly thought she stole all the scenes that she was in. Mm -hmm. I thought her and Rob Corddry, like we said, had really good a comedy chemistry mm -hmm. together and my favorite part of the movie when was when she was explaining what she wanted to do to mason in the beginning of the movie about getting a guy that just came like once a month and punched him in the nuts and said you know what you did and just walk and, away and then they do it at the end of the movie it's still my favorite part of the movie is the end scene i was gonna say that is a delightful where scene. her and and hater go and do that to mason but I, I, watching this movie, I like I said, I don't think Mason deserves it by no. any means. Uh-uh. He didn't, like, leave her at the altar or anything like that, but I still find it enjoyable. Yeah. I don't know why nut shots are so funny. God. Some things never change. That's true. That's why Jackass is still funny to me. Yeah. There's a lot of nut shots You should shots do, like, that. a special uh, Jackass, the movie or something, as an episode. I totally support this. Because I don't... I think some most of the stuff will hold up because it's just stunts and jokes, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I don't know. Next week. No, not next week. Not next week. Uh, we'll do that. I love Jackass. They're yeah. making a fourth one. They are. I don't know how that's going to be. <laughs> These men are almost in their 50s. That's... Johnny might... Johnny might be 50. Yeah. Yeah. Let me look real quick. Oh, speaking of mid-2000s douchebaggery. How dare you? It's a little dated. Jonathan Knoxville, born Philip John Clapp, turns 49 years old oh. next month. Damn. He will be 50. That's crazy. I always like Johnny. So. I always like Johnny. I, I like Jackass. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just joshing with you, man. No, and we haven't watched it in years, so it'd be fun to see if it holds up. Uh, speaking of holding up, what did you think of this movie? Does it hold up to your adult standards? It doesn't. Okay. I think the plot is really silly. I don't think Cameron Diaz and Ashton Kutcher really have that great chemistry. I, there's definitely other people in other movies that have way better chemistry. Mm -hmm. I don't... I think the whole them falling in love was really forced at the end. Like a quick two scenes and then all of a sudden they're in love. I don't fault them for hating each other in the situation they're in, but it's just... It made it harder for me to believe that they would fall in love. I agree with you on that. There was, there should have been a slow turning point for them where they slowly are developing love and, you know, liking each other. Whereas you're like, probably an hour of the movie is spent them hating each other. Yeah. Maybe even more. And then here's 10 minutes of they've made this turn and they're starting to fall in love. And then bam, here's the end of the movie. The minute they introduce her into his family a little bit and he introduces her to his niece. Mm hmm it's like her ovaries explode Yeah, with the love for him. Very true. Um, but yeah, I just... I, the only reason I would rewatch this is to laugh at Lake Bell and Rob Corddry. And that's why I felt like the, the plot is very thin, but I still felt it was a really funny movie. Because, yeah, Kutcher's not the best actor in the world, but he's still funny in the movie. Rob Corddry's really funny in Lake Bell. Their parts are hilarious together. Cameron Diaz is pretty likable. And then even some of your really minor side characters, like Zach Galifianakis plays a very small part in this movie, but he's funny. So yes. I felt, yeah, it's not the best movie, but it was still enjoyable. Yeah. And it, I think it's probably the closest I ever went with, I don't know if this holds up or if this is funny and good. 
but I felt it just as like if it was a 50 50 it's 51 percent holds up 49 percent I don't think held up so I, I just gave it a little nudge to the holding up I, I agree with you I think it's it's a very watchable movie too mm-hmm. I wasn't sitting there going like I can't wait for this movie to be over <laughs> but I think this is just gonna get more dated with time too which is something we were, don't really ever discuss but I think with even more time, it's going to be extremely dated. That's a good point. I'll give you that. Yeah. yeah. I think if we rewatched this in five years on the fifth anniversary of ruining our childhood, <laughs> I might go, wow, all of these jokes are terribly dated at yeah. that point. So I agree with you on that. But I still, I go holds up for now. All okay. Right. We don't agree. No, always. we do not. So thanks for listening to another episode of Ruining Our Childhood. If you have a moment why not check out our social media? We do stuff on there sometimes. <laughs> yes. Over on Facebook at Ruining Our Childhood. And Instagram at Ruining Our Childhood. And over on Twitter at ROC Movie Podcast. Yes. 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 I like how you, I was thinking, did she just say Ruining Our Childhood? Like you left off the D or something. <laughs> and I could tell your face was like, that didn't sound right. I think I thought I said Ruining Our Childrenhood. <laughs> I was like, what? That's That's not not a thing. That's not what we do here. So, yeah. I hope you enjoyed our Valentine's Day celebration or rom-com-tastic Valentine's Valentine's Day Day celebration. And And we'll be back next week. Yeah. And, oh, we should maybe start telling everybody to think of some questions for our... We're we're getting close. I can't finish this. (laughs) (laughs) We're getting close to our 50th episode, guys. Yes. Five zero, which we're going to do a Q and A, and you can ask us anything. It doesn't have to be movie, movie related. related. No, just if you want advice, we're really good at it. Yeah, ask us anything. Ask us our opinion on the gross gross national debt. Don't do that. We'll give you that. No, it's going to be won't. a very. I'll be like, I don't know, folks, but you can ask us. Yeah, but we'll uh, start putting on some posts mm-hmm. where you can send your questions or. Obviously, you can DM us. For sure. Direct message for people that don't know what DM means. You can slide into our DM, don't as the slide. kids would say. No. Into the podcast DMs. I did catch you said that to my mom. <laughs> You're like, as the kids would say, they're sliding into your DMs. There was a guy that just kept hitting on your mom. The shirtless cowboy at the New York New York. Oh. And he wanted her to get pictures with him, but... I was like, what are you talking he about? And kept yeah. calling her flowers because she had a floral shirt on. Yeah. He's like, can I give you some beads? <laughs> hey, <laughs> flowers. Mom, I'm almost like, no thanks. Shirtless cowboy with pierced nipples. <laughs> uh, yeah. Good time. Zuh. Good times. <laughs> okay. Well, we're out of here, guys. We hope you enjoyed another episode. We'll see and you next week. We'll, yeah. Bye. Bye.